So we've all seen this clip of Jim Courier asking Sinner about his racket setup. If I went and bought this off the shelf, would this be the one I get? Secrets, guys. No, it is, honestly, it's. Uh, I think it's a really normal racket, to be honest. Honestly, if I'm honest with you, I don't know even the. You keep saying honest, which just tells me you're lying. And of course, Sinner is lying. He does not use a normal racket that you can just go buy off the shelf. Walk over to your nearest tennis warehouse, and you'll find Sinner's glorious face all over the brand new Auxetic 2.0 speed. But Sinner does not use that new speed. He didn't change the racket now for three, four years. Just take a look at his last couple of matches. The racket he used to win the Australian Open isn't even the same paint job as the new Speed. So it actually looks like last year's version. But so what? That's not so bad. He's using last year's model. The speeds don't change that much from year to year anyway. But zoom in a little bit and you'll find that Sinner's racket actually has gloss paint. Most rackets these days are produced in like a matte or a satin finish. So if you know a retail racket has matte paint and your favorite pro is using a glossy version of that racket, there might be something fishy going on with what they use underneath. If we zoom in a little more, we can see something really rare in today's rackets, shared holes. Most rackets today are produced in a normal string pattern where every string gets its own grommet hole. So if we go back in time a little bit and we're looking for the last speed that actually used these shared holes where the main and cross strings share the same hole, that was the Graphene Touch series of speeds which initially came out at the end of 2016. And checking Sinner's string pattern, he uses a 1619, not the 1820, so we can be pretty sure he uses the Speed MP and not the Pro model. We can confirm this with a little check-in with our favorite top tennis head specialist, DR325i. He confirmed that Sinner uses the head pro stock with the code TGT301.4. TGT301.4. Let's break that down so us humans can actually understand what it means. First, the letters. So TGT usually refers to the pro stock counterpart of TGK. Most recently, these TGKs are retail frames produced from the Inegra or IG generation of head rackets from the early 2010s and onwards. However, there are some TGKs which are pro stocks from before that generation. Supposedly, it's actually a reference for which factory in China produced the rack. Now, the numbers. So 301 refers to the speed mold used for the XT and GT generation. 301.1 and 301.2 are the XT Speed MP and the XT Speed Pro respectively. So that decimal point kind of stands for the layup, but also the string pattern in this case. 301.5 is the GT Speed Pro and 301.4, the racket we care about, is the GT Speed MP. What is this gray material right here? And this is a little bit of weight. His personal TG T301.4 has been modified to an uncanny 325 gram strut, 33.3 centimeter balance, and a pretty heavy 340 swing weight. Plugging Tennis Warehouse's average numbers for that retail GT speed into their automated swing weight customization tool, and the best we can get is a partial success when looking for Sinner's rackets. Thankfully, Luca's GT speed was under spec. This is Luca's actual racket that he owns. It's a Graphene Touch Speed MP, weighted up to Sinner's spec. Sinner's exact spec just isn't really possible unless you really luck out with QC. So we're gonna have to make a sacrifice somewhere and I've decided for today that that sacrifice is going to be static weight. After adding about seven grams of lead at 12, changing the strings. So apparently Sinner uses Hawk Touch at like 60 pounds. It says it's strong, is this right? 28 kilograms, is that right? Yes, 28. Which is just outrageous. The thickest the string comes in is only 17 gauge, which kind of brings in some durability questions because this string pattern is one of the most open that I've used recently. So I was pretty pleased with myself when I found this out. If you actually take off the trap door from the older generation speeds, it only weighs three grams. But if you get like an Auxetic or a Graphene 360 Plus trap door, it has this little weight built in and it weighs 7 grams. 
we get the following 329 grams, 33.3 centimeter balance point, and a 340 swing weight. So pretty close, four grams off, big deal. So how does it play? So you like this batter by I mean, that thing is crazy. Like it's truly insane. The transfer of energy with that balance, like the transfer of energy feels so center. It's like you, you like come and then poof, the racket head yeah. just like smashes through the ball. Really compact, but loose. Yeah, exactly. It's crazy. Time. I mean, literally you're just going like that if you want and just bombs. So today's video is sponsored by Friendship. First off, I want to thank my friend Luca Berg from Rackets and Runners for actually lending me his speed mp for a couple weeks for this video and then thank you to my other friend ali amg gutierrez she's been putting a ton of work behind the scenes and that includes preparing a storefront so we are really excited to now be shipping rattlesnake strings in canada this is tour sniper we also carry the string I won my first tournament since being a junior player with in Grapple Snake Tour N8. We have gauge options. Strings start at $22 for like alpha or game changer up to $25, which by the way is still cheaper than Luxon Alu Power. At shipping within Canada for free if you order like four sets or you want to try one of each. Two or three flat out of my favorite strings ever made by any manufacturer at any price. So thank you to Friendship, and back to the video. So here it is. So this is a pretty crazy feeling racket. It feels like you really have to swing out on every shot. I totally get why 60 pounds tension is necessary. It doesn't feel too stiff. It doesn't feel too boardy. It feels like that is the tension this racket needs to keep that ball in. I totally get why Sinner needs that kind of tension. I also totally get why his forehand looks the way it does, why he really stays on the gas every shot on every ground stroke. It's what this racket loves. It wants you to rip it fast because if you swing fast enough, you'll generate enough spin, just enough to pull that ball down inside the baseline. If you don't stay on the gas, you're punished with a short ball. The racket just doesn't like it. If you really screw up the swing speed, you'll just hit long because you don't get the extra spin. It loves when you just tuck your elbow in and keep your forehand super compact, like a rock skipping motion of a forehand. Super western grip works really well. This is a bent elbow forehand racket. I don't think Federer would like it at all. I imagine it'd be super tough if you had an eastern grip and really stretch out your forehand. This is a center racket. This racket has so much identity. It feels so unique. It is super fun to play with, but definitely not something that works for my game. It's hard to modulate your spin. It's hard to slow things down. It's hard to buy yourself time. It's an all gas, no brakes kind of frame. So what should you do if you want to recreate this setup at home? While well, you can scour Facebook or eBay for a used GT Speed MP, you could try forking over a very pretty penny for his actual pro stock, or just substitute the Graphene Touch Speed MP for the previous version, which would be the XT. Right now, you can even get that XT on Tennis Warehouse for $99, which just seems like an absolute steal. It's a little stiffer in flex than the GT version at 67 RA, but considering the last TGT 301.4 sold on ProStockRackets.com for over $500 and eBay prices for retail GT speed seem a bit ridiculous, I think going with a brand new XT is probably the right move. So if you're interested in the XT Speed MP, I've got links in the description to Tennis Warehouse where you can find that for $99. If you make that purchase, a portion of that will go directly to funding the creation of future tennis content just like this. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.